Thank you for attending the great graveyard shift, which is uh, the, the post-lunch event. I, I look in the crowd, I see Norman is sitting and smiling at me. I, I wasn't aware I was supposed to be on the panel this afternoon. I thought it was Norman. So <clears throat> between being called out of lunch and now I'm trying to pull together a couple of ideas to talk to you about, so there's no PowerPoint. Um, <clears throat> what, what I want to reflect a little on is this conference was about policy formulation and implementation. And are there any themes that we got from what we've heard over the last two days? Are there any takeaways that we want to ponder on going forward? And in a sense, that's what I want to, want to address from what I, I think I heard. And then we can always uh, take questions uh, on, the, on the floor, on the panel subsequently. I think I probably jotted down three or so points that sort of struck me and uh, see if I can uh, go through those. The first is, I think, in the, the broader debate on policy formulation and implementation, we need to go back to basics. And basics, in my mind, is what is an economic system? Because essentially that's what we are trying to influence. When we say policy, policy is about the system. And a system is more than just economics. The system as I see it includes institutions, includes markets, includes agents, includes rules, includes a, not even just the formal rules, a, a, set of, a set of procedures under which people operate. And those procedures by definition include cultures, include history, include specifics, include aspirations. And all of those come together in the, that system that we are trying to, to influence. And so when we think of the, the issue of policy formulation, and I think what we heard quite clearly from the first presentation on yesterday morning, which looked at the overall economy, and then the aspects about sustainable living and the culture of change and changing attitudes and down to labor issues, it brings very much to the forefront that policy is about changing an economic system getting an economic system to literally tango. Once that dance is not taking place, you cannot have, I think, genuine progress. And the reason why you don't have progress is because you set up tensions. And tensions say you are somehow avoiding, not paying particular attention to, or simply ignoring the elements that make up the system. And so that to me is a, a key point that one needs to take from this. You have to see the political, you have to see the legislative, you have to see the rule of law, how it is implemented. This last session we heard about uh, compliance and we heard about how you implement as opposed to what you actually have on the books. So I think that that's for me the, the very first point that we, we have. The, the second point I think that comes out of this is there seem to always be in the policy formulation notion some tension between the macro and the micro. And I think for me we need to step back and think about this a little more. In my mind I don't think there's a macro and a micro debate in the same way as we talk of a top-down, bottom-up way of management. I think you need to see them as feeding on each other. So to the extent that you can argue you want to monitor, and I'll use that word right, you want to monitor at the macro level, and you want to monitor what is your aggregate investment. You want to monitor what is your overall balance of payments. You want to monitor what's happening in terms of credit in the country. 
that has to be thought of in terms of who is investing, who is consuming, who is borrowing. And once you go down to that next level, the first thing that comes to mind then is, is it in the formal sector? Isn't it in the informal sector? One of the things we talked about. Is it small business or big corporations, which is SMEs versus the large corporations? Is it households or is it the government? So you're now saying, do people have the funds? Does government have the ability? And once you go down to that level, you see immediately that in the context of this economic system that I talked about, the rules of operation, the structures that you have in place, forces you to say, what is the environment that you are engaging in that will allow those micro units to do those things that we are talking about that will build up to the aggregate broader macro level that we are in fact trying to influence in the first place. So policy formulation, policy implementation, therefore has to be seen in a dual mode of influencing at the micro but monitoring at the macro within the context of a set of rules that hold the entire system together. So I think that to me is the, the second uh, point that one needs to, to, to keep in mind. The third is that we always do things within a intertemporal choice theoretic framework subject to uncertainty. And what we mean by this is you're always making decisions today that will have an impact some point in the future, knowing very well that you don't know how that future is going to evolve. And so when we talked about diversification, I think there are a couple of words that struck me most. One is in today's day and age when one observes the world is changing and changing rapidly. One where technology is changing literally by the day. The only thing one can hope to be is extremely nimble. Okay, nimble in an ability to assess. Nimble in an ability to see an opportunity and seize it. Which implies being able to make decisions in a very swift way and also being in a situation where you can be willing to change. And so when we talk about a 2020 plan, we talk about what type of sectors we may wish to uh, be the focus, whether it be by natural choice of the private sector or by design and control by the government. If you are going to take four or five years to implement, and by the time those four or five years do come around, the world has shifted, the paradigm has shifted, then all your efforts are at naught. Not because you didn't make the right decision five years ago, but because the implementation lag, by the time you do get to realize what you've done, you've actually lost the boat. And so I think part of that paradigm we don't talk about is the, the nimbleness of uh, policy, formulation and implementation, and what it means in terms of the micro, macro um, stream that I, I was referring to um, a little earlier. The, the next word I think that comes to mind in that uh, intertemporal uh, decision on certain framework is you, you have to recognize there are going to be vulnerabilities. There are casualties along the road and maybe not so much in Trinidad but in almost all of the other islands that we, we have in the region, you have natural disasters. You have shocks from the outside. You are always, in a sense, playing catch-up. And playing catch-up means, in my mind, that you need to confront the fact that we are highly vulnerable states and highly vulnerable from a, a number of perspectives. And that vulnerability has to factor in into any policy formulation and implementation plan that you actually have. It is also the case to me that you cannot be catching up all the time given that you have that vulnerability. And I will add the next word in is you need to be able to innovate. And innovation, therefore, added to nimbleness 
becomes what I think will be the hallmarks of how we are going to go forward within this uh, intertemporal uncertain nature. Now, I don't know how you generate or create innovativeness. Um, uh, schools of thought that think it should be led or supported. There are schools of thought that think if you allow markets to operate, then the markets will spontaneously generate innovation. So whichever model one chooses, I think it is always the case that the early bird is the one that gets the worm. And so one needs to be putting ourselves in the frame of mind which says we need to be at the forefront. We need to be at the cusp. We need to be advancing things in a way that looks beyond that which we can see with the hope that by the time we can implement, if we are nimble enough, we can actually see the fruits of that, of that innovation. So I think for me those are the, the three things that I take at a broad sweep level. Um, specific questions, I'd be happy to take off the floor. Unprepared, uh, off the cuff um, synopsis, as it were. Now sitting in here for for Norman, he's smiling. <laughs> uh, okay, so thank you very much.